but as photographers, how do you handle scars? Like, you know, I mean, you have people that come in and nobody's perfect. And I just wonder if that's ever been a thought that's crossed your mind, especially if you've been in like taking photos uh, where there's struggle and where there's, you know, where there's strife and, you know, where there's, um, you know, um, but uh, what are your thoughts as, as photographers um, about whether, to, whether to, to focus on that, when to focus on it or when to not, you know, I mean, sometimes it's a really big part of a story, I would think also, depending upon That's a really what. Um, and I'll speak to it in this way that uh, not the physical scar so much, but uh, uh, there's often a really a power dynamic where the photographer gets to choose to take a picture and when to take it. And you wonder sometimes what right do I have to photograph this person in their vulnerability, in their, uh, whether it's their poverty or their uh, sadness or whatever it is. And uh, there really has to be a level of trust established before uh, as a photographer, you feel like you can do that. And I can think of pictures I've made that I won't show, uh, that I won't publish or show because I feel like I stepped over that line. I photographed someone in their vulnerability when uh, I really didn't have a right to do that, but it was an amazing moment or scene. Um, and I can think of other moments where I have stepped over the line and I'm glad I did. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you one example. Uh, I was uh, photographing in Inuit villages in Alaska and I was in a church service and I had never been in a service, even in the deep South, where people were so fervently religious. And I knew I wanted to take one picture that showed that. Um, and I, I picked up my camera and photographed two women in prayer. Um, and I probably shouldn't have done it, but I feel like I, you have to feel like what you're doing is important enough or significant enough that you want to capture something the way it is. And in that case, I'm okay with the way I stepped over the line. Okay. Wow. Um, well, I'll just speak to the, to the scars in these pictures, because in a way I, I didn't make these pictures, but of course, immersing myself in this work and selecting and deciding it should be published and seen um, and exhibited. And I think what, what I feel is this extraordinary push-pull because the damage is so beautiful, you know? And there is, uh, and it's evidence of, a, a, it reminds me of, of, of the violence of the era. And of course, right now, reflecting back on this time when Jim Crow was taking hold, um, a violent time in America, a struggle, and and yet and yet somehow this 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 damage sucks me in with its beauty that 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 in a certain way is a paradox that you can't address in a history book like you were saying i learned so much more and you know just looking at these photographs and these faces well a history book can't really address that thing about life that sometimes the things that are the most traumatic end up being those things that shape us into being the more beautiful person you know the best person we could be or our lives i mean you know no one wishes trauma on anyone but art can capture that you know it can it can it's the one thing that can embody uh something that doesn't make logical sense and yet it makes em emotional sense. 